When I'm out there on my own, over and over again, I see one thing. I look back across the yard, across first the grass, then the brick-hemmed cement patio, past the four-foot orange and primary blue water-corroded Fisher-Price basketball hoop, to see on not really white stucco the shade of eucalyptus leaves pushed by California breeze dancing and darting. French double doors, framing my view of our living room, effortlessly divide the scattered savage wilds of a three-year-old's backyard from the modest attempt at reason inside. At the back of the house, buoying the bedrooms above, the cordial, familial walls of the living room hold warm 5.30 in the evening September light. That same light will sustain him, but here I see Dad, so much younger, hang up the phone and look to my sister who reads on the couch. When I look again, they're facing away from me. Between them, facing them, and through the French doors, me is our neighbor. I don't remember her name. At the time, I wouldn't have known it, but I see her polite, disarming smile. I imagine the smile of my dad and sister. I see her laugh and in deference raise her palm to my father and say, Thank you, but no, I should get going. She had moved to that street, two houses down from where we would end up, A few months before us, right around when I was born. When I asked him recently, my dad said she moved out when I was four. He didn't remember her name either. But what I do remember, or can't forget, is looking through the double doors and seeing on Grandpa's big wall clock the second hand slide over, our neighbor's hand supported by her now warm smile, glide down, strengthening the room, affirming the house with a sense of anticipation, but without fear and expectancy. Everything inside was now unrestricted, unbridled, but still. As I looked, though nothing happened, I saw the house that had sheltered strangers negotiating each other's presence settle to just stillness and comfort. I remember I exhaled. Then they all three, my dad and my sister, now our neighbor, walked together towards the living room and so towards me. I see my dad smile, then his hand indicate our neighbor towards his chair, and as he and my sister settle into the couch, her ponytail is touched by that California breeze. I see five black threads of the I guess 100,000 dance like the eucalyptus shadow and her head turns over her shoulder so that for a moment my sister's eyes, full, affirming happiness, meet mine, are meaning and substance, are to me nourishment and everything I could ever need. But she turns back to my dad, who in turn is focused on our neighbor, and it's not that she had taken something away, as much as given me hunger, wanting, craving, and longing to feel that, to just feel that, to just feel that, which like everything since was nothing, but that was the good kind. Then came obsession, which is wanting set askew from reason, and so much looking, looking hard or wandering, wanting, Either way, what could be more distant from that moment of silent human ratification now 28 years old? But how else to find it? 